So if you're a long time subscriber to the channel, you'll know that I loved my S7 Edge and I kept it for around 18 months after reviewing it, which is like a big deal to me because I've never had a phone for longer than a year before. And I still wanted to take a look at the S8 Plus, even though I posted this video about a year ago. And yes, it still makes sense because I've never bought an S8 or an S8 Plus, but my friend Emily let me use hers. So hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas for Feltech and this is the look at the S8 Plus. First, let's cover hardware specifications of this thing. You get an Exynos 8895 with a Mali GPU, which is one of Samsung's in-house chips with eight cores, four low power and four high power cores. And you get four gigabytes of RAM unless you buy the S8 Plus Duos, which gives you six gigabytes of RAM, which is something I didn't know before researching for this video. A lot of people tend to hate on any SoC not made by Snapdragon, and I tend to disagree because I believe that this Exynos chip is really good, the same way the 8890 was back when I had my S7 Edge. Whichever version you buy, you get 64 gigabytes of fixed internal storage, which I think is a good happy medium, although you can't go up to 128, which is annoying. However, you can expand via micro SD which is awesome and means that you can take photos, videos, music and films wherever you want to go and the software to go along with all of these specifications is Samsung's heavy layer on top of 7.0 Nougat which is something that hasn't been updated which is kind of annoying but I hopefully will get Oreo going into the future. Just for reference I never touched that Bixby button it's kind of annoying I went into a shop when I was thinking of buying it ages and ages ago when it first came out and I didn't like the look of Bixby and because I only had the phone for a limited time, I didn't have a look at Bixby. But it is there and it is a button and it can be annoying, it just depends what your preferences are for AI or which AI you want to use. Usually I do the body and the design and then the screen very separately, but with this phone the screen kind of melts into the design. And not only with those curved edges on the side, but also the rounded corners that almost mimic and reflect in the rounded corners of the actual device itself, the chassis. And the way that the glass on the sides melts with the rails on the sides which are aluminium kind of feels like a more rounded phone than you'd first think which is weird because my s7 edge and of course the s6 edge had almost a very razor like grip on the sides which were very harsh but the s8 and s8 plus have really nice rounded and refined edges which make the phone a lot easier to hold and also a lot nicer to hold the 84 percent screen to body ratio is pretty awesome you get a pretty huge screen the 6.2 inch WQHD AMOLED 18.5 by 9 that goes really well with the design and I feel like looks best in black because the OLED nature kind of ripples into the black of the actual paint. And I think the best bit about this design is yes it has a glass back and yes that enables wireless charging but I think the best bit is that you get IP68 water and dust resistance all built in even with this super sleek and elegant design. This phone ships with the WQHD mode off and it's on W Full HD which is like a wide 1080p. Now I kind of agree with having it like this because in my use as soon as I switched it to WQHD the battery just started dropping in percent. I was like, oh, this isn't good. So when I had it on W Full HD, which is when I got most of the B-roll, it was a much better battery life experience, but we'll talk about battery a little bit later. I found that, honestly, I really couldn't tell the difference, even at 6.2 inches, between W Full HD and WQHD. And I've always thought that QHD was the way forward, but this is crazy. Of course, the buttons have moved to on-screen now, as opposed to the S7 where they were off-screen. But this does have one of those resistive touch kind of home buttons where you press into the display and it kind of gives you a feedback, like a vibration feedback, similar to something you'd find in an iPhone 7 or iPhone 8, although this is different because the fingerprint scanner is on the back and the haptic feedback is part of the screen, not the body of the phone. As much as people like to bash the placement of the rear fingerprint scanner, I actually don't mind it being there. Like, You'll get used to it, of course if you're buying this phone you're dropping so much money on it, you probably don't care if it's up back and in the wrong place. Of course it's because you can hardly distinguish where the camera is versus where the fingerprint scanner is, but you soon get used to it after just a few minutes of using the device. The 12 megapixel camera which sits right next to that fingerprint scanner is good. It's not amazing and it's not bad, it's a good camera, it's just not that fancy. It's derivative of something from the S7, which was already a stunning camera. The software is just as good, really like it, but it hasn't got that software of the Pixel 2, it hasn't got the dual cameras of its bigger brother, the Note 8, and it doesn't have a super high resolution sensor. It's a 12 megapixel sensor with f1.7 glass, and it just works. 
you're going to have a pretty good experience whether you're using the pro modes or auto modes and you get some decent photos out of it. Obviously shooting UHD video which contends with pretty much every phone nowadays and you also get 240 FPS at 720p. Just one thing I want to point out, why do most phone manufacturers ship the phone with a camera that is set to a lower setting? Most of the phones that I've tested on this channel, I'll put some pretty bad test photos up mainly because I've gone and done all my testing, got all my test shots, had a look and the camera had default put it on like 8 megapixels or full HD video instead of UHD video. It really bugs me, like why do you advertise that your phone can do this and then you set your phone to a lower kind of resolution on the camera. It, it just annoys me, just sorry guys, it annoys me. The front camera, the selfie shooter, is a lot better than the one on the S7. It is derivative in the fact that it's got a nice wide iconic Samsung lens on it, but it's 8 megapixels instead of 5 megapixels and it's got f1.7 aperture, which means that it's better in low light. The 3500 milliamp hour battery is much larger than the 3000 milliamp hour battery found in the S8 but not quite as large as the 3600 milliamp hour battery found in the S7 Edge. Now this is probably down to the Note 7 fiasco and the fact that they can't put large batteries in these phones anymore. And that's a bit of a shame, but you do have that Exynos 8895 chip, which is a lot more efficient, meaning that you should get better battery life, even though you've got a slightly smaller battery in the phone. You get Quick Charge 2.0 over USB Type-C, which is awesome. And of course you get wireless charging as well. And for those of you who want a headphone jack, it's still there too. So do I stand by the comments made in my first video about is this gimmicky and is it something I'm not going to buy? Personally, I'm still not going to buy it. One, because I'd have reviewed it by this point, and two, it's just not my cup of tea. Can I recommend the S8 Plus? Well, for £500 plus pounds on the used market, I feel like that's going to drop down when the S9 is released and everything comes down in price, of course, as the new version comes out. At £500, pounds, it's still not bad, don't get me wrong. The screen is stunning, the performance is very good, and the camera is alright. And the overall package, the overall presentation of all of this is just stunning, as Samsung has been doing for the past couple of years now. I don't feel like there's going to be a huge difference between the S8 and the S9 or the S8 Plus and the S9 Plus, so I wouldn't really worry about buying this and then seeing a revolutionary new device come out. But as I said, I would still recommend this phone to anyone who really wants it. You're going to get a device that does really well under multimedia consumption, has some good battery life, and some great ways to charge it as well. All right, guys, well, that's it from me. My name's Ryan Thomas from Failtech. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, dislike, comment, subscribe based on your thoughts. And uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, thank you so much, Ross, for supporting me. Anyway, guys, my name's Ryan Thomas from Failtech, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.